All right, so uh, we have a, a committed audience here. Oh, so you yeah. want to introduce me or just? Yes, yes. Uh, Vidodo Samiano is from Jarvis Christian University in Hawkins, Texas, where it's probably warmer than we are in uh, up, up of the United States. Uh, he's going to talk about integrating ethical conversations in a biocalculus course, which sounds very interesting. So you take it away. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I would like to talk about the uh, integrating ethical conversation in biocalculus. Yeah, we apply this integration like start from last semester. So like fall 2023 and then the spring uh, 2024. Yeah. Okay. So this is the abstract. Um so basically what I want to share here is uh, you know, uh apparently we include this in our courses in mathematics. So so um this is how this is how to you know to implement efficient this this to the student. Because um and the course here is uh, we use the course in actually this this course is like a part of the new emphasis in our department, which is um uh, you know computer science and mathematical biology. And then I join with uh, to do the mathematical biology, I mean uh, to do the ethical ethical conversation in biocalculus. So actually the biocalculus exercise is like the redesign course from calculus one and calculus two. Are you saying because did you teach did you team teach the course or was it just taught by math people? I'm teaching by myself. Okay, yeah. thank you. No, no one teaches. Yeah, because uh, because this class, the class is really small because uh, like um, the student in mathematics is like really small and so you know the other student from chemistry and biology they just start to have this calculus for 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 for, for the biology they just start the calculus like last semester. And also, I I I would like to do, uh, to access this, uh, whether this is a success or not, and also I will discuss about the challenges, also the barriers, how to implement this uh, ethical conversation in biocalculus, and also I would like to set the strategies to address those barriers. So first, is you need to know what is uh, ethics or not. Okay, so ethics is based on the referral number two, which is uh, from. Santa Clara College in California, I believe. So ethics is referred to the standard and practices that tell us how human beings ought to act in many situations in which they find themselves, you know, as friend, children, or citizen, uh, business people, professional, and so on. So ethics also concern with uh, our character. Okay. So you can say that this, uh, ethics need a uh, knowledge, skill, and also habit. <clears throat> and sometimes people mix up between ethics and feelings, you know, like you can feel like you're bad or if you do something wrong, but maybe the other people didn't feel that it's bad if they do something wrong, okay? So you cannot consider this as a feeling, the same as a feeling. Okay? You cannot consider uh, ethics as, as, a, as a religion because many people are not religious, right? But they act, act ethically, okay? and then some religious people act unethically. You know something like that. Okay? You know, ethics cannot be considered as a religion, something like that. And also the same thing, ethics is uh, you know, ethics is not the same thing as following the law. You know, a good system law does up incorporate many ethical standards, but law cannot deviate from what is ethical, right? You know, like law can become ethically corrupt. You know, like a function of power power alone and then you know and design to serve the interest of narrow group, you know, like certain groups and all that. So, and also law may also have like difficult time designing or enforcing standard in some of it important area. So maybe it's like slow to address a new problem, something like that. You know, so I think it's not the same as uh, following cultural like, uh, accepted norm, because culture can include, you know, like political and uh, ethical custom, right? Expectation on also behavior, and also ethics is not science. You know, like a social or natural science can provide important data to help us make better or more informed ethical choices. But science alone does not tell us what is enough to do, right? So, this is there is uh, six ethical lenses that you can use to decide what is wrong and you know what is right. 
So the first one is a uh, right lenses, and the second one is like the judge's lenses, and then the third one is like util utilitarian lenses, and then the third, the fourth one is like common good lenses. I mean common good lens, and the fifth one is a uh, virtue lens, and the second one is the kinetics lens. I will discuss this uh, when we discuss about the example in the book. So um, so how to make a decision? Okay. So making uh, making a good ethical decision requires train sensitivity to ethical issue, and also a practice methods for exploring the ethical aspect of decision, and also within the the considerations that should impact our choices of a course of action. Also having a method for ethical decision making is essential. Uh, so when practice regularly, the method becomes so familiar and we work through it automatically without consulting uh, specific steps. So this is the framework how to make an ethical decision. So first we need to ident identify what is the ethical issue. And the second one is to, to find the fact, what is relevant of the case, what is uh, what are the options for acting, acting on it. And also we need to evaluate alternative action, you know, like uh, what well, which option is best, best respected to the right for all of the, you know, you know, the rights of all who have a stake, right? So something like uh, right lenses, you know, so it can be option how to treat people fairly, giving them is what they do, right? So this is like we call it the justice lenses. And which option will produce the most good and do the least harm for as many stakeholders as possible. So this is considered as uh, if we view it from the utilitarian lens. And the, the, the next option is which option best serve the community as a whole, you know, like not just some members. Okay, so this is a, we call it the common good lens. And the other option is like which option that lead to X as the sort of person I want to be, you know, like this is like the, the virtual, uh, virtual lens. Okay? And also which option appropriately takes into account to relationship concern or feeling of all the sector. So this is called the chaotic lens. So you need to choose one option for the action and then test it. And then after an evaluation using all of these lenses, which which option is best addresses the decision, right? And then you need to implement our decision and reflect on the outcome. My decision turned out, and what have I learned from the specific situation, and what is any follow up action or what should I take? So, this is the framework how to make ethical decision. So, this is the ethical conversation about the particulars. Yes, I have a 12 cases, so maybe I cannot discuss all of them. And for each case, I just take like one view. Okay, so for case one, for case one is a uh, it's about the species rich, richness. Okay, so it seems reasonable that the larger the area of a region, the larger will be the the number of species that inhabited the region, right? So to make some kind of scientific progress, however, we need to describe the relationship more precisely, right? So it's, actually, this is like a yeah, I believe that the this kind of um, we need to make a kind of a mathematical modeling you know, in order to see what is the relationship between the species and area mathematically. And also we can use mathematics to better understand the process that gives rise to this pattern. Right? Point maybe you need to make the, the growth of the population as features. Right? So for, for this one, I'm just considering about the, how if we view this from the right lens. Okay? So the ethical action of this is the, the one that it expresses uh, that best protects and respect the moral right of those affected. So, so what do you think about this? If, if you view this from the right lenses, what do you think? This kind of uh, relations between the species and the, the area. Yeah, I think we can see, we can we can think about like, you know, like what happened in Alastan maybe. You know, it, actually they, they have to have like the same uh, right, something like that, but you know, one and another like want to take out the others. Okay? So maybe this one is like a considered as the AP view from the right lenses. Okay, for the second case, is uh, that considered about the this one, you call it the vector cardio uh, cardiography. 
So the heartbeat pattern can be used to diagnose a variety of different medical conditions. Okay. So this pattern are usually recorded by measuring the electrical potential on the surface of the body using several, or, you know, often like a 12 wires or, or LEDs. And how can we use the measurement from this lead to diagnose uh, the heart beats? I mean, the heart, the heart problems. Uh, okay. So one thing is, let's consider this uh, from the justice lens. Okay. So justice is the idea that each person should be given their due. Okay. And what the people are due is often interpreted as a fair or equal treatment. Okay. Um, we lost your screen sharing. Well, I don't know what happened. Um, Vidudo presented a slide earlier in his presentation, which had several descriptions of what ethics meant in terms of uh, justice, uh, emotional. Oh, here you are. You're back. Okay. Do you want to share the screen for the last few minutes? I don't think he has capability, but we're going to post those slides because I thought that's that slide in which he had all of the descriptions and the narratives of uh, ethical perspectives uh, could prove valuable. Um, I think we were anxious to hear more specifics in a case, and maybe that was where he was heading before he got cut off. So um, I'm going to stay and, and listen before I go on to the next workshop, but I think we've just lost our speaker. So I guess it's kind of like if you're at a meeting and the trap door opened and your speaker fell through the trap door, you would say, what happened? <laughs> well, thank you for attending the session. Feel free to move on and uh, we will put the slides up and you can take a look at those. That's our bottom line, okay? No problem with the internet. Okay, let me set up again the screens. Yeah, we do have a few more minutes. So if you wanted to go a little deeper in an example, that would be good. That's... Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have a problem with the internet. Okay. Well, I was telling the people that are here that we're going to post okay. these slides and the rich slide that you had, which told the various kinds of perspectives on ethics uh, would be a good thing for people to look at. And uh, Carrie in uh, New Zealand commented on that. Can you give us an illustration of how it is used in the classroom? Yeah, so <clears throat> I intend to show the case. You know, I have like a 12 case. So this 12 case is based on the case in the text in the textbooks. And for each case, the students should be able to view the the ethics from you know from the from six views you know like from yes from, from the lights sorry you know from the light lens from the justice lens from the utilitarian lens yeah from from the common good lens and also from the future lens and also the from the care ethic lens. Yeah. So I give you an example for case one. So I try to give you an example for case one using the red lens, okay? You know, I give you an example, for example, like, a, you know, what happened in Palestine right now? So, we, they, you know, they live in the same land, but they try to, you know, <laughs> to claim the land for themselves, something like that, okay? So maybe this is the case for, for, for case number one. So do you have discussions in class? Yes, so we, every person has to have a fair treatment or the equal treatment, right? Okay. And for the case number three, this is talking about the drug and alcohol metabolism. Okay. So medical sciences, uh, sci scientists study the chemical and physiological changes that result from the metabolism of the drugs and alcohol. Okay. 
I'll review this from the utilitarian lenses. So how will this action impact everyone at uh, uh, effective? Eh? So so what what do you think? So so I think we need to to have all of the population agree, you know, like that the uh, do do your students come to a consensus or do they all agree on one of these lenses or oh no no i think this is only a sample yeah so so the student is free to pick with with the lenses that they can do can use yeah okay yes. well we're going to have to you know end here because we have to move on uh, i'm sorry you've had this trouble with the technology but okay but people can look at your slides and uh, understand uh, what it is you're trying to do with the class later on. Yeah. And uh, I, I need to move to another room to host it. So I want to yeah. yeah. thank you for okay. no problem. Yeah, for trying. And uh, it, yes. it's been good. I'm sorry for the. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry for the trouble. <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, thank you very much, and you take care. Okay. All right. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.